Pippin. Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica, and look what is back, it is Pippin Gaiden. I've been getting a lot of requests to revisit the Apple Pippin because I had a lot of videos for this planned, but the initial views weren't great, so now that we have a bigger audience, maybe we'll do a little bit more fun with the Apple Pippin. Before we get too far involved though, if you do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, and that notification bell, definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we have a Patreon link in the description below as well. But today we're taking a look at Elzone, and it is one of the weirdest point-and-click adventure games I have ever played, but it is very interesting. Intriguing and definitely worth checking out. You can play it on Windows, Macintosh, or if you're one of the few people that actually own an Apple Pippin, you can play it on the console as well. And I was really excited to talk about the Pippin stuff, but the stats are a little wiggly, but I've been asking people what they want to see more of, and I've been getting a lot of requests for more of the esoteric stuff, obviously being video game esoterica, people are looking for the weird, so I figured I'd revisit a few different Pippin games. But Elzone is an interesting game. I really enjoy it, but the basic premise of an adventure game is not here, which is to say that there aren't really any puzzles. This is more of an environmental art piece in which you kind of navigate through the world of Elzone to try to get to the end. But it's everything that you encounter when you're actually playing the game that is the most intriguing part. As we come into this biosphere here, we have this train and we can enter into it, and we need to basically figure out how to make it move. Nothing is too complicated, and the great part is, is that there is absolutely no language barrier to this game, even though I'm playing the Japanese release of it. There is no dialogue, there is no text, everything is visual, which makes it a really interesting game to play. And you'll see here, once I have activated this tram, I'm going to move forward into this facility and try to figure out what's going on. And that's a lot of fun of this game is where are you, what are you doing, why are you here, and how are you supposed to get through it. And if you didn't grow up with adventure games like this, this was a big genre for a few years when CD-ROM drives really became a thing that most people could afford because there were days before you could afford a CD-ROM driver that even existed. So when they had this large storage medium, they decided to fill it with all these pre-rendered graphics and everything in L-Zone looks really nice for its time and place. Of course, it has aged. You know, this is early 90s. 90s, you know, mid 90s, not something like 2021. But I love the art style and the aesthetic of these games. And the maker of them is actually a visual artist who went into game development. So you can definitely see where he's coming from in that background. But the mystery of Elzone is the most fun part. We're flipping switches, we've done something, we've turned the lights on. Everything is basically something you can interact with, and everything that you interact with changes the environment. Is it for the better? Is it for the worse? Is it going to help you progress? Is it going to hinder your progression? It's really hard to say, but that's why I love this game so much, because you're never quite sure what you're doing, but you want to continue to do it, because now we've raised this gigantic, almost looks like a Tesla coil, from the ground, and there's a button we can press, but we don't exactly know what it does. And that's the joy in this game, is the discovery. If you want to play a game that you have absolutely no idea what you're doing in, but you always want to continue to progress to see what's going to happen next, Elzone is definitely an awesome game for that particular genre. It is a narrow genre, and of course, this video may do poor stats as well because it is one of the more esoteric things I've ever put on the channel, but it is always fun to take a look at where gaming came from, and of course, the Apple Pippin being an absolute commercial disaster, you're not really going to see many copies for the Pippin around, but it is pretty easy to find on Windows and Macintosh. You can download it, it is abandonware, and you can play it right after this video, so you don't need to own an Apple Pippin, or in my instance, a prototype Apple Pippin, to actually be able to enjoy it. But I love taking a look at games like this because this is not something you're going to see on YouTube very often and it is to my detriment because I'm trying to be a successful channel at the same time that I'm trying to show people some of the weirdest and most unheard of games in gaming history but it's just a time and place sort of situation. If you didn't grow up with these games, this might not make much sense to you, but having grown up with things like Myst and other point and click adventure games after they got out of the 2D genre, this is just so intriguing. There's so many flashing buttons and lights, you just want to see what's going to happen next, and that is the great part. But I would say the sound design of this game is excellent as well. It's very environmental. It's hard to call it a sound track, but it's more like a soundscape. There's all these different sounds from the facility that really build to give you an overall oral sense of where you are. So go ahead and listen for like 30, 45 seconds and I'll come back and talk more about exactly what the hell's going on in L Zone because even I'm not quite sure. But enjoy.
like I said before, I let you listen. I'm not sure I can call that a soundtrack, but the entire soundscape, all the mechanical noises, all the beeps, it sounds kind of ominous. Now, there really isn't any huge horror elements in this game, but the entire time you're playing, you do have this disconcerting feeling to yourself, wondering if something's going to jump out and actually scare you. And it does a really good job of just kind of setting the mood and the tone, because everything in this facility is odd. It almost seems alien-like. First, we can find a skeleton on the left, and then we can find a hologram of a brain on the right and it's just showing us things i honestly do not know if this changes anything there's basically no walkthroughs of this game online so you can play it and experiment with it and try to find out what's going on because a lot of the questions of elzone are probably never been answered before and if you're so inclined you can be the first person to do it but again i get that these are very narrow interest games and the apple pippin is a very narrow interest console i originally got it because one i was a little drunk when i was bidding on ebay and thought it'd be funny to own a pippin and i won and kind of regretted it and two not many other people talk about it and even though it failed it's still really interesting from a historical standpoint to see what Apple and Bandai were doing back in the day. And there is a sequel to this game called Gadget. I will cover it on the channel, maybe next week, maybe in two weeks, maybe in three months. I'm never quite sure when I'm going to put Pippin stuff up. It's kind of just when I feel like talking about something very, very random. But you'll see here as we move on to a different area of the game, we have this entire console here and it does do things. And that's what I said. You can run through this game. You can get to the start to finish within like 30 minutes if you just keep going through doors. But there's so many offshoot rooms where you can interact with different different things that do seem to change different aspects of the game and that's just the really fun and strange part. I'm not even sure if this is a game, it may just be an interactive art piece that happened to be sold in a gaming medium because it, back in the mid 90s this is the only way you could do this sort of art and graphics, it had to be in a game, it wasn't something that would really present well as a film. But you'll see as we get to this hatch we've got a couple lights and you do need to solve how to get in. It doesn't just unlock automatically, you do need to use some of the so there's really light puzzle aspects and elements to it, but not so much that I would call it a traditional adventure game. But I just love everything about L Zone. This kind of mid 90s CGI, you know, sci fi looking graphic work, it's awesome. The soundscape, all the environmental noises from the facility, all the beeping, they're really fun as well. And you'll see here as I push this button, something is going to happen. The screen is going to black out and a movie is going to play. And of course, it's tiny because this is the 90s and we didn't really get full motion video, full screen, but it's just this weird, strange pattern. I'm not sure if it's trying to hypnotize you or in the game it's trying to teach you something as your character it's almost impossible to say what it is but the fun part about that is you can think it's anything you desire you get to fill in the blanks with your own imagination and as i've mentioned before your imagination is better than any story a game can tell you because it's personal to you but I just love these type of games. It's of a time and place. And I grew up in the 90s with a DOS computer, with Apple computers. So I had a lot of fun playing these type of experiences. And it's something that is familiar to me. If you've never checked them out before, Elzone is a really weird place to start. But if you want to get into something really weird, you could do a lot worse than this game. And I mentioned earlier that there's not that many puzzle elements, but there is a few that do keep you from progressing if you don't figure it out. You need to basically use this portable blowtorch here to open the door. What's beyond the door? If you feel like seeing, maybe you should go and play Elzone. But yeah, if this video does good stats, I will make another Apple Pippin video. If it fails, then I'll probably just retire the Pippin forever. But if you have any questions or comments, I'll leave them down below. I love chatting with you guys. I would ask if you've ever played Elzone or if you own an Apple Pippin, but I would assume 99% of people that are watching this have not played the game, nor have they probably ever even seen a Pippin. It was a failed console. It is a nice shelf piece. I don't play it that often, but I love having it. Short of that, I'll have videos throughout the week as well. Do me a huge favor, like I mentioned earlier go down below hit like subscribe and that notification bell or i will push you out into the black ether of this door and you may never be seen again sure to that thanks so much for watching guys and we will see you next time bye bye what's beyond that door